This Let's Play was supported by these awesome hobby companies. Hello, everybody, and may the fourth be with you all. Mm. For this very special Star Wars Day, I'm joined by Uncle Owen, apparently. Yes! <laughs> Coming shambling out of Tatooine. Um, <laughs> This Please. is my rockin' Uncle, Uncle Owen cosplay right nice. here it's, with my prop. I dread the thing. Yeah. I'm, I'm hoping it's just a massive glass of milk and magnesia to be burnt. Oh, <laughs> <my God. laughs> uh, freshly squeezed, Jerry. Freshly squeezed. Yeah, he, went to, he went to act two for that, didn't he? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> dear God. Uh, <sighs> Freeze with us as well. And Grimwolf from the site, Ralph, is very kindly going to be running us through a special game of the Star Wars role playing game. The game that started all the Star Wars hullabaloo off. Uh, so it's great to have you with us on the channel. Uh, no worries, and... glad to be here. Welcome, Ralph. And Welcome we're going to be, uh... guys. I'm very excited. <laughs> yes, I could tell. <laughs> Playing the crew of the Lazy Minoc. Um, uh, so... I've changed, actually, I've changed the name, but we'll get to that. I've actually, I've oh. actually came up with a better name than that. Oh, I, I think you'd be hard pressed to. Uh, but <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll explain who we are in our in our characters, uh, yes. and then I think we'll just kick straight into it. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, I am in English. That is. <laughs> oh, I'm uh, the Wookiee first mate of the ship, so Gar Kaza. I am. Oh, oh God. Yeah. Go I, I am. I am. Uh, a Moralin is what is what I am. I'm a Moralin. In other words, I'm a, I'm a green dude, badass mercenary, and my That's name that. is Hazizan. I'm a Twalek, so I my name is Ash Daisha, um, and I am a smuggler and pilot of the ship. And the ship is called the Lazy Gungan. Ah! Just, had be, just had to be, just really had to be, didn't it? You know. <laughs> Very harsh. Uh, so you are all the crew with the lazy gungan. Now, what I'm going to do is we have a little video intro. So I'm going to actually click this in to set a little bit of the scene for you. As it, as it suggests, and you are the crew of the Lazy Gungan, a modified YT transport. So a little bit like the Falcon, but it probably looks a little bit different. It's entirely up to you how the ship looks. You know, the, the way that it works is a lot of Corellian freighters are just that. They're just custom shells that you can make look however you want. Okay. Um, you are currently traveling, uh, or shall we say escaping at velocity, from a, a small moon within one of the sectors near the, 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 the smuggler's world where you have, just as you were taking off, you received this, this request from Crimson Dawn. For those of you that don't know, Crimson Dawn is one of the major criminal organizations within the fringe. Um, it is not actually under, known who actually runs Crimson Dawn. Um, they have lots of brokers and lots of those individuals that will seek out individuals for jobs, but it's who the hierarchy is within Crimson Dawn is not very well known. Um, <clears throat> so what I need from you, three, first things, we're going to get straight off. I need you to make a piloting roll because <clears throat> you're at, the, at the, the, the con. Next to you is your, co your trusty first mate. Mm -hmm. And in one of the gun ports is, of course, of our friend, the mercenary, Hazza. What it is, what's happened is you have 
blasted away from this the, the spaceport and being intercepted by some what's called Z95 headhunters. These look like X-wings, but they don't have the cross files. They just have a single plane wing with guns on it. They're thinking that you were a standard sm- standard freighter. Four of these fighters came out of nowhere to ambush you. So, and looking at the state of those four ships versus the state of your ship at the moment, because it's got a little bit of damage, a little bit of dents and stuff like that, you, you thought uh, discretion being the best part of Valor. So you're actually blasting away to get enough a distance away from the planet to then jump to hyperspace. So what I need from you, Free, is I need you to roll a piloting roll mm-hmm. first off. And then what we'll do is we'll cut into some uh, straight ship combat. <clears throat> 12? Nope, that's fine. Yep, you're, you're able to, to basically uh, put the, the pedal to the metal almost and just speed up and uh, try to break that distance away from you. Right. So for people watching from home, how many dice did she roll and what was she looking for? <clears throat> she There was a... Uh, the, the roll would have been... I think you've got five dice, haven't you, Free? Yeah. You, free has five dice oh, in next one. piloting. Yeah. Plus mm-hmm. the difficulty number was just a straight uh, sort of a moderate roll, which is 10. Okay. Of 10 for that. Okay. Right. What I would like from each of you is to look on your sheet at your perception. Who has the highest perception of you all? Because this is how combat works. I got four plus one. Yeah, I have to be me. 2D plus one. And Jerry? Just 2D. Just 2D, right. Free, what I want you to do for me is I want you to roll that. Now, the way combat works is you roll as a group. It's a group initiative. Okay, and it's based on the perception. So the group with so the the way it works is the person with the highest perception rolls. Okay, so for the pilots, I'll roll three dice, and then for free, you roll your dice and add the plus there to it. Okay, eighteen. Right, you have the initiative. So as a group, you go first. Now this is where you can plan what you want to do. Okay, you can talk amongst yourselves, plan what you want to do and things like that. So at the moment, you've got four Z95 headhunters chasing you down to try and get it, get basically wreck the ship and possibly board to see if we've got any cargo. Okay. Okay. Pedal <clears throat> to so, the metal. Okay. What do you think? Uh, <clears throat> am I, I, if I'm in you're a gun, in a, seat... you're in a gun, you're in a gun turret. So yes, you may. Open fire, uh, should you wish. I'm thinking I probably should just open fire and, okay. and cover us while we try to jump to hyperspace. Yeah. What do you think, Wookie? <laughs> That's what Wookie. I thought. Yes. Um, <laughs> Seems like he's got the right idea. Assuming I'll do the astro navigation mm-hmm. okay. uh, for the jump, and it's just a case of the other pair doing that while I do the calculations. I do the yes. heavy lifting, and you just you, you fly yeah. casual and you shoot angrily mm-hmm. yes uh, right so the way it works now is you decide how many actions you want to do okay the downside of that is everybody gets one action in combat okay and that's a straight dice roll there's no penalty okay any additional action on top of that one action is you lose a dice so if you want to do two actions that's a minus one dice if you want to do three actions that's minus two dice you can never go down to more than one dice but remember, that's your rolling technically one d six and hoping it's a a six. <laughs> mm. Hoping it and that would be the, the the special dice as well. Remember that, that that there is, which we'll cover. Should anybody do that, roll a six on that. Okay, well, I, I will yeah. attempt to take two actions then. Okay. Uh, so while I'm calculating mm-hmm. our our flight path out of here. So mm-hmm. we don't crash into the nearby suns and moons. Yeah. Uh, I also want to try and angle the deflector shields to the rear to give us a bit of protection against the incoming ships. Okay. Uh, That's fine. <clears throat> um, I'm going to shoot my blaster out the back. So you're going to shoot the, go- <laughs> the ship's guns? Yes. Right. So that on your character sheet will be starship gunnery is the skill. Okay. Starship gunnery. A lurk near the bottom in technical. Yeah, it's in tech. It's in me- mechanical. Or mechanical. Sorry. Yep. Starship gunnery. Yep. 4D plus two. Yes. So you would roll three dice, three normal dice, one sp- the, s- the special dice, and add two to the dice roll when I get you around to, to you doing that. Okay. Uh-huh. If you want to f- fire twice, that would be 3D <clears throat> plus two. Okay. Which would be two. Two, two normal of- collard, one 
mm-hmm. special color and the plus two. Okay. And free your piloting, you're just Oh, I'm uh, making my way straight out of there, trying okay. to keep us as balanced as <clears throat> possible and away from anything. So what you're technically doing is dodging. Okay. okay. That's that's what would, it's technically classed as a dodge. So what you what I want from you to do is for you to roll your starship first, because that adds the difficulty num- that adds to the difficulty number they need to shoot you with. Okay. So if you're doing a straight out dodge in any combat, your dodge your roll that you make adds to the difficulty number. So if it's say a 15 and free rolled another 18, that would be a 33 to hit. If that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So rush my ship first, yeah? Yeah, you roll your starship first, and then we'll do Warren firing, and then we'll come round to, oh. to Jerry doing his shieldy bit. 21, together with so the So 21 plus the difficulty number. Yeah. Right, that's fine. So Warren, for shooting... <clears throat> I'm going to go are... 3D because I'm going to shoot twice. You're going to shoot twice. Okay, oh. that's mm-hmm. fine. And I'm just bringing up the range... I need the difference. And on my special colored dice, mm-hmm. I preferably want a six, but I definitely do, don't you, want a one. You don't want a one. You'd prefer to have a, a six. Okay. Okay. So they're r- roughly medium range. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I need you to roll twice for me. Okay. okay. So first roll. First roll. Yeah. <laughs> only on the table counts. Oh, yeah. I was going to say, only on the table counts. Where's your, where's your dice box when you need it? <laughs> okay. So I have um, uh, a six on one dice yep. on a white dice, a one on a white dice, and then my four on the purple dice. So what's that, 11? 11. That misses. The blast, the first but, shot you fire just skims straight over the top. I not get you plus two? I just plus two that. So that's 13. Yeah. And that's a hit. Yay! So as 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 the ships are weaving, you know, to try and get lo- a lock on you, you sort of angle the, the the chair and just and first shot hits it and you see it hit this ship. Roll roll the hit for your second shot. We'll do the hits first, mm-hmm. then we'll do the damage. Okay. Okay. So the next are you, one. Are you firing at the same ship or are you firing at a different ship? Oh, um, what do you want to do? Firing at a different ship. Okay, that's fine. No, I got a six on the purple one. So do I roll one more now? Is that your spe- is that your destiny dice? Yes. yes. Roll it again. Okay. I got a five that time. So that's eleven plus plus five plus five. So that's plus seventeen two. plus two. So that's nineteen. Yes, mm-hmm. that's a hit. So both hit. So you've hit two separate targets. Okay. <sighs> Right. So the ship has a basically a quad turret. So it's like what the Falcon has. Okay. Mm-hmm. So what I want you to do for me is roll five D just roll five D six. One of them has to be a special dice. Uh-huh. Yeah. And this is the damage that you're doing. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Right. So 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. 18 on the first one. Okay. So if you if you hold on, I'll just bring up the stats for the Z95. Headhunter. D6. I did have it, and it's just made it disappear, so we'll do that. So. I, keep, I keep getting distracted by the dancers behind Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> Uh dear. Yes, this is it. So on. is that a couple of Twilix behind you, Terry? <laughs> is it? <laughs> There's a Morellin up on stage. Is there? <laughs> hey, there is. So you got what was the number there, Warren? That you got? Um, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Eighteen. Uh, so you've done heavy damage to the ship. Mm-hmm. So as you as you see, you see this first ship that just sort of swoops and you're tracking it and you sort of track just ahead of it and the blast hits this this ship and causes heavy damage. You see sort of a chunk of the wing and a chunk of the engine starts cleaving off that. Yeah. Can you roll one D6 for me, please? Uh-huh. Just a normal one. Five. Five. As you see it, as you as you as you hit it and cause this severe damage, you see the shimmering of the shields suddenly just 
and it, it seems like from what you understand the way sh- ship combat works and stuff that you've probably just taken out the ship sh- the ship's shields as he starts to peel off slightly mm-hmm. so can you roll the damage for the next one please yep okay well this is a good roll mm-hmm. so 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 21 Ooh, that's okay. severely damaged. Okay. Um, not bad for a mark. And can you roll a d6 for me, please? A six. Boom. You have a kill. Now, don't so, get cocky, kid. <laughs> <laughs> so as, you, as, you, as, as you're tracking this other ship that's, coming, that's sort of taking the place of the one that you've just sort of taken out, you're tracking, you're tracking, and then you let go. And just as it moves, it moves in the wrong direction, and the blast hits the cockpit. And you watch as this ship just comes apart completely straight in front of you, sort of right behind you. Just nice. you get that sort of huge, typical Star Wars explosion. I nice. drink to that. I like a drink to that. Firecracker in it. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, Jerry, you're, you, you are. Rolling for the shields, aren't you? Shields first. Yep. And so then just roll the dice. Of course. This adds to the whole protection when that gets yeah. rolled. Should they? Should great. they? What did uh, you get? Eleven. Right. So keep track of that number. Mm. Okay. And then you're plotting the hyperspace, aren't you? Yep. So the ba- the make an astrogation roll straight wh- because you're plotting to somewhere that you know and you have an astrogation droid on, or you've got a, a, a hyper navigator navigation computer. The dice difficulty is 15. Okay, dokie. Okay. It's a base 15. Uh, what's that? 11, 12, 14. If only I hadn't tried to do two things at once. Yes. Yes. Now, if you want, now, if you want, you can use a character point. Uh, ooh, yes, I will. Oh, oh. Because I, I can't Look, fail it. No, you can't fail. Yeah. yeah. I tried hard though with another one, but I couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Was that bouncing too close to a moon? In like mm. Dustin Croft's voice, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so yes, you've got the the thing ready in. So as it comes around after their turn, because they'll still get a turn, you will then jump into hyperspace. So that's that. So as 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 I said, one of them is peeled off, so he's not going to be involved in this combat. But the other okay. two are coming to bear down on you. Mm-hmm. Their difficulty number is insane because of the fact that. You are dodging and weaving. Okay. Yep. So each of them are going to try and get at least one shot off. So the first one, no, that's not going to, you know, he's, so you get that, you know, the, the, the laser scrape him across the top of the hole, but not actually hitting and doing any damage. And the second one, let's have a look. Nope. Even with a rolling a rolling a, a six on a special dice, didn't do any good. So yes, yeah, so b- both both these fighters as they're bearing down on you are basically blasting, and they're not having any success at all. As you then come back around, it's used again, and the first thing all I want to need from really is free to make a pilot roll. If it's successful, you will then jump into hyperspace and get away from these 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 lovely people that are chasing you down. I've got six on my special dice. Excellent. Fifteen. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. So you sort of you you tell everybody to sort of strap themselves in as you pull the levers back and you get the typical rushing of hyperspace mm-hmm. as the ship jumps straight into hyperspace, heading towards yep. the your destination and your rendezvous with the members of the Crimson Dawn. Buckle up, Buckaroo. <laughs> that's the one. <laughs> So <clears throat> you've got a little time. So what are you doing while you're waiting to <clears throat> come into Shadowport or to head towards Smuggler's Run? So we're, we're all right at the moment, aren't we? We're under, we can have a bit of a relax for a second. Yes, you can have a little bit of a relax. <laughs> Me and the Wookiee are going to go and play Starship Chess, Star Wars <laughs> Chess. <so. laughs> Is it Jamdak? No. To Jarek. Jarek, that's Jarek. That's it. That's it. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, I'm going to go get a drink. <clears throat> Seems like the smartest okay. thing to do now. I'm out of the woods. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, top myself up, get a drink, keep the edge off. No worries. So yeah, it's 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 a little. You know, it takes a little time. I mean, 
if anybody wants to, you can make a, because I think you've all got Street Rise, you can make a Street Rise roll to sort of get your understanding of what Crimson Dawn is. If you want to do anything like that as well, I'm happy yep. for you to sort of do that. Um, just make a straight, just make a Street Rise roll if you have it. If you don't have the skill, it's the stat. Now, Street Rise falls under knowledge, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. And you would roll the knowledge dice. The number of knowledge I still rolling one of the mm -hmm. strange, the odd color one, but the difficulty number will be a little bit higher because you don't have the skill in it. Is how okay, I okay. So if I do it, it's a two D plus two. Yes. So you, one white dice, one colored one, dice. Exactly, and then just add plus two to it. So that is a three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, that yep, yeah, that's fine. The, the difficulty number is not that difficult because you are all operating within the fringe. You've all heard of Crimson Dawn. It's just you mm -hmm. know how much you know of Crimson Dawn. Mm -hmm. Now, for the people watching at our sort of join us with us, you may have heard of Crimson Dawn, and it was the organization that we all saw in Solo. It was the the organization that um, uh, Dryden Voss was in charge of or part of. You know that that's that organization so it's a criminal organization like i said it's got multiple heads there's multiple arms to which i would say um i know and if you've watched solo you all know who actually runs crimson norm but the individuals within the sort of the fringe don't it is sort of that shadow uh person at the very top it's not known who actually runs it they run a lot of the criminal organizations they have links to other criminal organizations they have some links to the hut cartels so like jabba and zero the hut and things like that characters like that they also have some links to black sun which is one of the other big criminal organizations uh within this period of time that the other thing as well is the period of time that we're actually playing in, and i forgot to mention this at the beginning and i do apologize it's about five years before episode one so it's about five years before uh, A New Hope. So mm -hmm. it's roughly in that sort of period as, you know, the rebellion starting to gain its foothold. So about the same time as Rogue One. Rogue mm -hmm. One, I know, is a little bit further on because of the way re where Rogue One ended. So it's about that sort of period of time. It's the same mm -hmm. time, time period as Star Wars Rebels was set in, sort of roughly that same time period as sort of the rise of the rebellion sort of mm -hmm. era. And you know, heading towards what happened with episodes four, five, and six. Okay, so you're not you're not anywhere near episodes one, two, and three, and the Bad Batch and all of that stuff. In the Clone Wars, you're sort of more towards the bat, the Clone Wars is in ancient history. A lot of the people in fringe in the fringe areas where you are um, believe what the Empire put out about the Jedi. You know, things like that. That you know, the were criminals. They were traitors. You know, there's still all of that. There is some mystique behind the Jedi as well, still as well, because you know a lot of the older people know what the Jedi were like, but a lot of the younger <laughs> generation that don't never saw Jedi and understood, you know, the the propaganda that was put out from the things. But the Crimson Dawn has been around for uh, that sort of length of period of time. You know that that is one of the other things that is known that the Crimson Dawn rose at the end of the Clone Wars and has just gained a bigger, bigger foothold, right, leading right the way through to where they are now where they have all of these different elements bringing in things like the pikes and the kit and things like that are also part of them as well. Mm -hmm. um, they are very invo heavily involved in the smuggling of spice among other things. Okay. Okay. So that's, that's a little bit of history of what Crimson Dawn is and for them to reach out to use as a, you know, as a, as a small smuggling crew is, is a big deal for you because it is, you know, it's perceived by a lot of the, the transporters and the fringers and the smugglers that this can lead to a lot of money, a lot of credits, a lot of prestige, mm. you know, being, being asked to, to either be involved with them or have or run something for them. But it doesn't j just come with, you know, the, 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 the glory of all of that is, you know, there are risks, you know, there's risks yeah. with anything that you do. So, you know, you, you're sort of weighing that against each other. Okay, so you're, you're traveling in hyperspace for a you know for a uh, a period of time. I haven't actually set specific periods of time with within this because it's just easier that way. Um, within the actual a full game of this, when I ran it, well, like I said, when I ran it with my friends and my D and D group, I did have to set travel times because that's what what we needed to do because of the way that we are structured the game for this. You travel in hyperspace for X amount of time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, much easier that way and you, you're basically coming into a, something called the Galagos sector 
and you get the beep, 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 which denotes that you're hitting your hyperspace coordinates. Mm-hmm. So it's it's mm-hmm. sort of bums on seats time again to get yourselves ready to to hit, you know, to to come out of hyperspace. Okay, head back so to the bridge. You, you break out as as everybody takes their seats. There is a additional. There are a couple of additional seats on the bridge as well, so you don't have to be always in the gun turret. Yeah, you can join you can join them on the bridge as well, and there is a fire control on the bridge as well, should it need, because mm-hmm. there isn't just those two turrets. There's also missiles as well. There's also torpedoes as well that the ship's oh. armed with. We'll all jump into the cockpit together then. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Take so you, take your shoes off before you come in. Shoes, I was <laughs> <laughs> Well, he's going to have problems, isn't he? You know, this yeah, well, yeah, work is fine. Work is fine. Yeah, he's, he's yeah, that, but, unless he plans on shaving his feet anytime. So. I, was just, I was just thinking, though, doesn't he molt and get the hair everywhere? You know, it's in the console. And... Yeah, it's probably easier. Just uh, relax. Very clean race. <laughs> <laughs> but... I, I can't imagine the hairballs you cough up, man. <laughs> I've, got a, I've got a cone in, in the sick bay if needed, if you get me to. Thanks tonight if you keep this up. <laughs> the catch is fine, so yeah. you won't be able to get your fingers around it. They probably fine. <laughs> so as you break um, hyperspace and come out, you basically break out into... An astro- at the beginning of an asteroid field, most of the smuggler, the what's called like the smugglers' holes or the smugglers' runs or these shadow ports are housed within areas that are really difficult to get to and only specific, you know, navigation uh, areas and specific coordinates are given out to people that are using them. And you, of course, you want them because you regularly come to this one. This one's called Smugglers' Run. Um, it is a a collection it's not just one asteroid it's a collection of several asteroids the bigger ones in the center are the ones where basically what's happened is they've gone in they've they've carved out the middle and turned it into basically a spaceport inside of an asteroid field nice. or inside of the asteroid so to get to it you have to na- do a little bit of navigating around which you know more than happy you know more than happy for free to make the piloting role to do this yeah otherwise you're <laughs> going to bounce into an asteroid literally yeah. hold your breath <laughs> ten. No, nope, that's. Oh wait, ten plus. No, 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 that's good. Ten. <laughs> yeah. Ten's fine. Ten's what you need. Anything less than ten, you would have been bouncing into an asteroid. Um. So yes, as you drop out of hyperspace, you know you see the star lines appear, and you know you you, you sort of pick up taking the controls as you're piloting through through the asteroid heading towards uh, Smuggler's Run, and off to the side you get that proximity alarm. And as you look out, you see some refitted, really old Clone Wars gunship coming basically out mm-hmm. um, to to sort of escort you in. Uh, the IFF changes slightly the the so sort of the identifier, and you see that's being identified as one of the patrol craft for Smugglers Run. But it's also got a a, 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 sub, a prefix at the end of it, and the, at the beginning of it, and the prefix denotes it that it's actually one of the Crimson Dawn patrol of vessels that's mm-hmm. actually come out to meet you and lead you into into smugglers run itself the the asteroid that you're actually heading to is one called skip one and it's what one of the largest he, uh, asteroids within sort of the area yeah um it's probably about a third of the size of our moon shows you how big it is this is a huge great big thing and it has been just completely carved out and turned into you know into this into this shadow port um within smugglers run itself and especially within skip one and stuff there are a collection of individuals that you all know or you've all had hearings of um there's jamark who predominantly deals in death sticks and glimmer dust so death sticks as you know is, is basically tobacco and same with um, so the, gl- the glitter dust as well as one of the spice uh, drugs, and also some gunjack. There's a producer called Sakaro who produces crash and burn spice, which is another type of spice, another another sort of heavily involved with the spice mining. There's Magayev who produces another spice as well. So these are all like smugglers and or or dealers in spice. Um, there's Mongaz, who uh, produces a, a spice that's actually brought in from a different part of the sector. And then there's Rill, who is a, produces this, uh, doesn't necessarily produce spice. He more deals with brokering of jobs within 
within smugglers run for for people to pick up not just spice jobs and smuggling jobs but also bounty hunters are known to come to smugglers run where they can pick up bounty jobs from some of the syndicates and things like that so as you're being sort of led in via this gunship into sort of the docking area that's sort of the area and things that you know about about what smugglers run is okay the person awesome. that you the, the 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 person that you received the communication from to meet is Lut, Lutz. So it's L U R Lutz S K. He is a Bothan. So for the Bothan race are basically a feline or a fur covered race, not like Wookiees. They're smaller than Wookiees. They're about the size of a human. Um, you would have heard the name Bothan if you'd, you know, they were the Bothan spies that got the Death Star plans and, and Return of the Jedi. So it's that race. Um, he is seen on smuggle on skip one, especially with his Barabel bodyguard. The Barabel bodyguard doesn't have a name. Now the Barabel are basically a race of reptiles. They're not Trandoshan. They're not like Bosk, who's a Trandoshan. The Barabel are the other sort of reptilian race that you see running around in, in Star Wars occasionally. Very ferocious, very ferocious, very vicious, um, prone to anger and have rage issues a little bit right, like Wookiees. <laughs> you do have a little bit of a rage issue occasionally. <laughs> Don't know who you've been oh, out the two years of brain. <laughs> <laughs> so so you, you, you're guided in by the gunship, and as you're sort of coming into dock, the gunship breaks off and heads towards, you know, heads, heads out back out towards um, wherever they're docked, because they're actually docked elsewhere. Because, like I said, with it being a collection of different spaceports, you know those those are elsewhere, um, and you're basically coming, you come in and, and sort of land within that. So you've landed on skip one. What are you doing? Mm -hmm. We've landed. What, what's in front of us? What's are we, well, are we you, you've, you've sort of docked. So you see the big docking station or the big docking bay. There's a collection of different ships there. You know, there's different there's different types of YT uh, transports. There's other types of transports in there. Um, there's nothing bigger than a, you know, like a small, what would be classed as a trillion, trillion transport. There's no huge cargo ships. There's no bulk freight as anything in here. A lot of it is just small, uh, what's called space transports, which are the ships, you know, that that a lot of the smugglers and a lot of those individuals do. You notice a couple of good, what would be classed as gunships, uh, not so much like the Corelli one, but like the Fire Spray or Slave One and some other ones, you know, so you can denote that they're probably bounty hunters maybe on, on port as well. Um, you do know... Uh, that you are to head to the, oh, I've got the name written here. There is a cantina on on here, uh, and I'm just getting the name up. I do apologize. Called the um, the the distant star. So there's a cantina called the distant star, and that's where the your contact or the contact that got in touch with you would said they would would meet you. Do we? Mm -hmm. I assume, even though this is run by the Crimson Dawn, mm -hmm. people would be expected to be armed. Yes, that there's no yes. like no gun thing. No, there's no. It's not. It's not like you know, hand over your guns. If you think yeah. of this way, this this is a bit like it's probably a little bit like the way Tatooine works. You know, where Tatooine was a spaceport. Yeah. You know, so it's predominantly a spaceport, and it's not necessarily run by Crimson Dawn. It's just Crimson Dawn have a presence here. Sure. You know, because there's lots of other cartels within. You know, within sort of the space that use these shadow <laughs> ports as a base of operation or a way of brokering jobs and deals. You know, it's just within within this area, Crimson Dawn is one of the more powerful sure. ones. They're not necessarily more powerful, say, if you went to Hut Space, because you know for a fact the Hut cartel controls Hut Space, like you know, with an sure. iron grip, just about anything that goes through Hut Space, the Huts know about it, you know. So it's like that. It's just Crimson Dawn are meeting you here because this was the closest port that they could okay, okay. get well, you to, to come to. I'm going to grab my bowcaster, uh, okay. head outside. Standard operating procedure. If I would normally get the uh, lazy Gungan refueled at a mm -hmm. stop like this, then that is what I will do. Yeah. Find somebody and growl at them until they understand me. <laughs> uh, right. uh, where, where is this Bothan? Where, the, Bothan, um, the Bothan is going to meet you at the, the country, distant yeah. star. Okay, the well, then, then, heck, should we head to the to the pub? <laughs> <laughs> um, question for you though: uh, Are you wearing your armor? Me? Yes, you have oh, yeah. armor. So if you look at uh, look at the sheet, you have a 
blast rifle or blast carbine, I think it was? Or was it the mm-hmm. heavy blast rifle I think I gave you? Yeah, so um, I have medium battle armor. Yep. I have a vibro blade. Mm-hmm. I have a heavy blaster rifle and a yep. blaster pistol. Yeah, right. For future, just so you know, the armor reduces your dexterity by one dice because it is quite cumbersome. Yeah, mm-hmm. but it does give you better protection. Okay, so it reduces your perception and your dexterity by one when using those. Yeah. Okay, as skill. Is the Twilic wearing armor? No. <clears throat> I think you've got a vest. I've got a vest. I've got a blast on. vest. So yeah. the way the way it we've works with combat, and you've got yeah, a we've got this um, guy. <laughs> the way it works is there is there is hit locations, so your armor covers everything, yeah. Where the vest would only co- help uh, freeze characters out if she gets shot in the chest, mm-hmm. because that's okay. what it protects. Okay. Um, but we'll get to that should combat come good. up. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm wearing sure, armor. Yeah, yeah, no yeah, worries. I'm I just wanted to check because if you're not wearing the armor, then you wouldn't get the benefits of any protection should you yeah. should you need it. Okay. Yep, I'm happy to make our way to the cantina. Uh, I am going to take a good look at all the ships around me, see if I mm-hmm. recognize any of them. Uh, okay, um, make a... I'm going to say make a... Just make a street rise roll for me, please. Mm-hmm. The reason being is because... It's more the criminal organization than things to see if you recognize anyone. Uh, 10. No, there's no ship there that you sort of immediately go, ah, I know that pilot type of thing. You know, that there's there's some similar shaped ships. You know, a lot of the ships look the same. A lot of the ships are very heavily customizable, but there's no one that you specifically can point out saying, ah, he's in port, or they're in port, or that's in port. Okay. Yep. I'm just going to follow a couple of steps behind the captain. Okay. I'm mm-hmm. always keeping an eye on all the other scum around us. Mm-hmm. Never stray too far from the wookie for me. Don't trust it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Good idea. So as you as you're sort of walking through the 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 the, the, the almost makeshift tunnels, almost, mm-hmm. but it's not. You know, I mean, it has been hollowed out. It's been, you know, completely soon. It's completely done. So it is there. You know, you can see the occasional pipe with crap oozing out of it and stuff like that, you know, so, you know, it's, it is a spaceport, but it's not a very well kept spaceport, if that makes sense. You know, there's, there's probably more money done on the, the different jobs and the different goods that are going through here than there is actually on the upkeep of the port. It's done a little bit, but you know, it's not, it's not, you know, it's not like an imperial port or a, you know, or anything like that, you know, a proper, a proper full on, Starport. This is just off the books. Off the of books, yeah, that type of thing. As we're approaching, mm-hmm. um, could I make a streetwise roll just to kind of listen out to uh, any kind of conversations or anything that are taking place, just to see if there's any signs of trouble or opportunity, or I just want to eavesdrop a little bit. You want to eavesdrop a little bit? I would probably denote that as you're walking through, because there is, you know, people walking by and stuff. Mm-hmm. That's probably more perception than street. Okay. Right? Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be generous. Is mm-hmm. I'm, you're probably not wearing yet? Are you wearing the helmet? Or are you not wearing the helmet? No, I w- well, um, it's up to you. Carrying the helmet. You're carrying so. the helmet. That's fine. So what I'm going to say is you don't lose the minus one perception because mm-hmm. you haven't got the he- you haven't got the bucket on. Okay. If you had the bucket on, then <laughs> you know that would because it's because it can you know mess with with sort of vision and things like that and, and mm-hmm. things like because it, it doesn't have all the fancy ge- gear that say, a stormtrooper helmet has. You're right. Okay. Okay. So just a straight perception roll for me there, one. So that's 2D plus one. So. Yeah. So one normal dice, one strange dice, and add plus one to it. What did you oh. roll? Double one. Oh. Ooh. Now, you, you, you're wandering around and you're sort of, and you're sort of, um, you know, trying to listen out and things like that. And you sort of turn around at sort of a corner as you head up this sort of you're, you're in this sort of large almost market area that you would class as, you know, where there's lots of shops and, and things are going out. And as you turn the corner to head to the distant star, you smack straight into somebody. And you stop. You then sort of look up and come face to face with a duras. 
No, a Duras. So, a Duras. So they're the blue-skinned aliens. So mm-hmm. for people who that's watched Book of Boba Fett, uh, we met a Duras. You met Cad Bane, the, the the gunslinger that you met. Yes, yes. That's a that's a Duras. So it's got okay. the, the big red eyes, the blue skin, and you recognize him immediately mm-hmm. as one of the security for the station. Mm-hmm. And you you bang into him, and then he turns and looks at, turns around and looks you square in the face. And there's not just him. There's about five others with him. Um. Of just as you just smack straight him, and he turns and looks and just pushes you back, and goes, "Hey, Slaymo, what are you doing? Can I intervene? Yeah." <laughs> Unless you've got something to say. <laughs> um, I've got quite a high persuasion. So I'm going to say I'm really sorry about my friend. He's had a couple of drinks. So it wasn't feeling well from the last one. Um, he's a bit clumsy. You see, yeah, I'm really sorry. No trouble. Let me get your drink in the cantina. If I see you around, I'm, I'm on the way. I want you to make a persuasion roll. Mm-hmm. But I'm going, to, I'm, going to, I'm going to increase the difficulty because he rolled double one. And one of the ones was on his <laughs> his destiny dice. It's fair so dice. So. Quite nice. Twenty-four. <laughs> I tried. He, he sort of looks at you and goes, and you are. And who are you to this thing? Pointing at, at him, going, This thing insult me. This thing, oh, don't mind him. He's only just had a couple of drinks. There's no reason for insult me. I have no reason whatsoever. I can't see. It's just a bit worse for wear. Drink will smooth it over, my man. Come on, let's get to the canteen. Oh, no offense needed. Plenty of drinks to go around. And if you've got a problem with that, you've met my wookie. <laughs> 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 Jerry, can you make a command? Because you've got command, and I'm classing command as intimidate. Because I'm guessing that's what you're doing when. Yeah, just leaning over. Okay. Because he will be lower than me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, most people are lower than you. <laughs> oh, I get a roll up on my fit dice. Woo-hoo. Uh, six and three is nine, and nine's eighteen. Eighteen. Right. right. You see the the sort of the group of six of them, yeah. The, there's there's two at the back that are starting to step away. <laughs> um, the lead at the front is just looked staring straight at it at, at, um, at your mammalian friend, and you can see you 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 all can see his sort of hand is down next to his side. It hasn't moved anywhere, mm. but it's sort of on his hip. And as you look, you can see there is a there is a blaster there. Mm-hmm. Um, it's all right. I've got a bowcaster in my hand. <laughs> you have indeed. No, yeah. yeah. two can play that game. Dr- drinks not worth it. Not no drinks. Not definitely not worth it. I'm more interested in credit. He insulted me. He cr- he knocked into me. He he caused in offence. Credit is what we would prefer. I'm tempted mm-hmm. to reach down for my vibro blade and cut his head off. Right. I mean, we did try the easy way, my guy. Yeah. Well, it, you know, it's like hand <laughs> shot first. You know, I know how this goes <laughs> yeah, done. Did. You know, so and um, I reckon uh, I was going to cut his arm off. Mm-hmm. I think it might be just easier to cut his head off, <laughs> and um, and then I think that would that would make the others, you know, back off. Right. As you're contemplating this. Uh huh. You hear a voice, a smooth voice, come out over the over, come come basically from behind you, and he, t- he uh, the 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 voice is Saris, be gone now. These people are with me, and as you turn and look and you see, uh, sort of standing there is the Bothan with his Barabel bodyguard. Yeah, the the oh, Dura sort of looks and looks back at you and sort of raises a finger. And goes, see you later. 
And I will also return with, see you later. <laughs> <laughs> no bitterness. Right. And then he, the, as the bottom of the barrel, I'll start walking towards you. You can see the Duras. In, you know, he is in a uniform of sorts. You know, you, they, they are the, you know, like an enforcer force almost, you know, like, mm. a, like a local police force. Mm. But, you know, there's probably a little bit less enforcement and more a little bit let's beat the living shit out of people and steal the money type of thing you know and, mm-hmm. and, and with them so you know, like that me. Thing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so you know he, he's he's is you know he's sort of starting to back away as the bothan is coming forward with 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 his nameless bodyguard because he hasn't got it you know his name's never been mentioned there's no been never no introductions and mm-hmm. he stops and goes and looks up and down and goes and then looks at you there and goes are you are you ash looks at straight at you there free because he introduces himself yeah He's, he hasn't introduced i just asked are you ash who's asking i think you know ash i mean i really appreciate the trouble you got out of i mean we would have finished it ourselves but who's asking i am your contact from the crimson dawn I am Lotz, and this is my protection. Shall we continue this conversation inside of the distant star? I find business being conducted in open areas to be problematic at best. If that's what makes you more comfortable, business is business. It is, and this would be very profitable for you and your companions. I have no doubt. And he smiles. There's something not right, though. You know, you you get you all get that feeling of, you know, like almost like a shark smiling. You know, it's like, Mm -hmm. yeah, profitable for who, though? Exactly. You know, is it going to be profitable? You was it going to be more profitable for him? You know, that type of that sort of little bit of tingle that you're all, you know, operating in the fringe. That's what you sort of, you, you know, you sort of get. So he leads you into into the distant star. It's, it's a typical sort of cantina. There's booths around the side and stuff like that. Um, you've got the robot, you've got the droid server in the middle. And he sort of leads you through the, the cantina into sort of a back area where there's a large room set up. And it's almost like a conference room in, in, its, in its sort of style and design. He moves around to the far end and takes a seat, sits down in the barrel, moves sort of, a couple of a couple of sort of feet behind him against the wall and is just standing there waiting as you all sort of file in. Wow, well, look at this private service. We've got out of a fight and now straight into a bar and we don't have to sit with a refra. What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> Why were you? Please sit and I will explain what we would like for you to accomplish for us. Scouts ahead. I'll remain standing. Okay. And you won? Oh, I'll You're take a up. seat. You're taking a seat? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. As he, as he sort of settles back, he goes, as you know, I am Lutz. I am a member of the Crimson, of an organization called Crimson Dawn. We contacted you because you were in the area near to where we, we feel that you have some expertise in. We lost one of our ships within the system that you would, that you were, uh, that you've operated in before. And you have knowledge of this system. So we felt that for mutual gain and benefit and some credits that you could go and retrieve the ship for us. How many credits are we talking? It seems like you need me just as much as I need you. I can go on and any bounty, any option and you can gain credits. So uh, this seems very specific to our set of skills. And I it's don't more quite set see to your specific knowledge of the system that you've that you've been in before. <clears throat> so, so when are, you we are talking twenty thousand credits plus we will deal with your debt that you have on your ship Ash we will clear that debt I was en route to clearing the debt 
Mm. Are you? Not from my understanding. And Zero the Hut really doesn't like people being late with their payments. No, How about late. we say 50,000 credits now, 50,000 on delivery, and you clear the debt? How about I just say goodbye and then watch as you are all, shall we say, have issues getting jobs in the future, especially in this sector? So the problem is, is you've just told me a location of something that you want really well. Yeah. And I'm sure that more people find out about something you want in particular. A lot more people are going to be after it, you see. Maybe. So we came to, we came to you to so, offer you an opportunity to make some money and possibly work for us. So what's As stopping, what's stopping us from leaving to find it to sell to another higher buyer? Please feel free. This is easy, man. You see this Wookiee behind me? Yeah. He costs a fortune to feed. <laughs> okay. So, you know, we have a price, we have our dignity, but we will get the job done. Very well. So, you know, where can we meet on this? A meeting of minds to feed the Wookiee. Because he's hungry. The Wookiee. I like you. You're very silly, aren't you? You see, are you a comedian or something else? Now no. we have we have a offer. We will increase that offer. Should you recover the items or the things that we require within thirty six hours, we will double our offer. And we will clear the debt. But you have a time limit. Double the offer within 36 hours. Mm -hmm. In, out of my plate to you. I'm not going to be buried. Nudging my toilet companion here. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it important to you anyway? Why is this job? I know I know it quite well. <laughs> <laughs> you know Why the else? system because you know the system okay we have lost I trust it. one of our ships has gone missing on mon gaza you know mon gaza you've you've traveled to mon gaza a couple of times you know the system mm -hmm. yeah you know the system quite well you know that mon gaza is patrolled by a has an, its own independent force called the rangers yep. mm -hmm. um they they're like an, a system police force stroke a uh, small army. Um, you also know that Mon Gaza has recently opened up communication and has been speaking with the Empire and the local moth within that area. Yeah. That's what you know of Mon Gaza. We have, we, one of our ships had an incident several hours ago. We received a message that it had gone down, unfortunately, within Mon Ga on the planet of Mon Gaza. And what do you want brought back? The ship or the contents? The ship and the contents of the ship. Should you, should it be enabled? And any of the surviving crew. And you if the ship isn't pilotable? If the ship is... Then if the ship isn't pilotable, then make arrangements for the cargo to be transported, either via your ship or something else. I am a bit concerned about the state of my ship. We're on the way in, we really took a couple of hits. <clears> it really hurt us hard. So before we leave, would it be possible just to, you know, you give it a look at, maybe a couple of upgrades, make sure we get there all in one piece? Is that something you can have a look at? We can arrange for somebody to look over your ship and make sure it's space worthy, but there will be no upgrades. You are already, you are all pushing the line when it comes to requests my patience only stretched so far yeah but okay. when you see the results of the wookie <laughs> okay i'll give you 36 hours we'll mm -hmm. double if we do it in less than that you triple it 36 hours you double it no triple you do it less than that, then we will talk about additional work that may come your way and maybe move you up the queue 
as some of our preferred, shall we say, assistance. Right. Clock is remember, ticking. Remember, you your debt will be cleared, though, Ash. Okay. You will no longer owe that hut anything. Get us a round of drinks and you got yourself to. It shall be done. And what he does as well is he hands over, a he slides over a data card. Mm -hmm. This is all the information that we have that will help you with information on the system and where the possible coordinates of where the ship went down and other things. Feel free to browse it. But once I leave the clock and once we notify you of your ship's repairs, the clock is ticking. You let's may do leave. it. Yep. Let's get on the road. Okay. We lift the drinks, take away, <laughs> and let's start making our way back to the lazy gun gun. Yep. If you can get them in plastic cups, that would plastic be. Plastic cups, yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> With this blue like milk. I believe they're called Sulu cups. <laughs> <laughs> Bravo. <laughs> so yes, so you so you so you you're able to get your drinks and then head straight into or head back to the to the ship. As right. you're heading back to the ship, you will already see at least two, three me mechanics that you don't recognize as normal mechanics from this port. Mm -hmm. Already crawling mm -hmm. over and checking over the ship and checking the engines and things like that to make sure well, it's all right. I suggest we get on the ship. Um, I think the Wookiee should keep an eye on the mechanics. Just give it a once over just to make sure that they're not doing any anything silly to the ship. And then if we can start to program in the coordinates um, from the data card yeah. um, into the, the ship navigation system and get get ready to, to go. Sounds good to me. As you're doing that, either one of you, it seems if 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 the Wookiee's standing guard, so you're going and doing that, can make a planetary systems rule for me, please. If you don't have planetary systems, it's a straight knowledge rule. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have planetary systems. My knowledge is 2D plus 2. What's yours? I just got D plus on mine. Hang on. You have the scale, but you don't have any dice in it yeah no. that yeah. means it's just your knowledge your knowledge but uh, so 2d plus one yeah so your so where the dice roll for warren would be aimed higher because he hasn't got the skill in it yours would be an easier roll because you're skilled in it you just don't have, have any dice in it that's how the, the thing works so, if that makes sense yeah i've got 2d plus one mm -hmm. nine hmm? what was nine. that nine nine I'm just checking. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, that's, that's it. Right. So, what you know of Mongas and the, the the system itself, and also the the whole um where the ship is possibly situated, and the the things around piloting within Mongas as well. Yeah. Um. You do know, like I said, that Mongas is patrolled by uh, a group called the Rangers. They are, like I said, a local police, for, a local security force, stroke police force for the system and for that specific planet. Yeah, the predominant languages are Hutties and Basic. On that, it's predominantly mountainous in its terrain with canyons and things like that. The major t town is called Minas Town. Um, it is governed by the Galactic Spice Mining Guild, is who's in control of the planet. So it is a predominantly planet that will you know that that churns out spice as it's um as it's one of its you know one of its main exports similar to sort of the way castle works um you also do know that ships that land or come to mongas do not deviate from entering out into the wilds uh, so you would probably have to land at the main spaceport and then travel out to the coordinates separately <laughs> Because of the way the, the the patrol systems the patrols work, the the system because it is predominantly used as a spice mining hub, is heavily heavily protected sure. by the rangers. You know they don't want unauthorized ships landing out in the wilds mm. and gaining spice and smuggling spice off where you know this is their main sort of import and export within the planet. Um, like I said recently, you have there's been rumors running around that the local moth has been or the local admiral, not so much the moth, 
the local the local admiral of the system, the, the Imperial System Protection Force that's within the whole area sector, um, has been uh, getting overtures of, you know, we need some additional help. You know, we will join you, you know, X, Y, and Z, you know, that type of thing. So there has been rumblings within the sort of the, the criminal underworld that this might happen and that the Empire's moving in maybe to, uh, to get a, a stronger foothold on the, you know, on the system. Um, the like I said, the coordinates for the 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 ship are it's it's sort of deep within sort of the planet next to one of the sort of the the canyon areas and one of the the section the sections that's basically running with um with canyons and riddles with canyons and things like that. Um, the ship itself is a YT two thousand medium freighter, so it's a quite big chunky boy um, mm-hmm. called the the Spice Lazy is the name of the ship. Um, there is a crew of. Just bring up the crew. Just bring it up. Do, do, do. Where's it gone? One, two, three, four, five. There's a crew of six. Seven. There's a crew of seven on the ship. That that, that this ship has. There's a captain. There's a pilot. There is a navigator. There's a young mechanic, and there's two gunners. Um, you've got information on all of those. Um, and that's really it. Uh, what what they want from me or what what they want to be, shall we say, retrieved is either the ship itself with its cargo or the cargo. And the cargo is that of, of believed within the information that you've perceived uh, to be spice, to be a, a large, large um, consortium of spice. Um, there is no information around why the ship crashed and what happened to the ship, other than it's crashed within the sort of the bad the badland areas. So you're not sure whether they were doing something that shouldn't be and was shut down or whatever, whatever it was. Yeah. So that's the sort of the the, the pre C or the all the information that's on the data card that that is being given. Um, as you're reading through it, your your outside guys, you'll see the the mechanics sort of scrambling over the ship. And and doing you know the checks and things like that and sort of and the refueling's going and stuff like that. Um, one of the mechanics, who's a small um, ugnot, jumps down, comes up to you and sort of gives you the sort of the, the thumbs up to say everything's okay now. As him and his consortium just basically scurry off and and head off. Assuming there's nothing looking untoward. Well, um, you can make a if you wish. You can make a. Starship repair slash is it starship repair? It is, isn't it? Yeah. You make a starship repair roll. Twenty-three. Not sure. You you sort of as you're looking and you you know you've seen you've seen devices before you know that are say beacons or whatever. You're not sure, but you think there may be one. It has been sort of planted, maybe a beacon, maybe a tracking beacon, a hyperspace beacon. You're not sure. As you sort of walk up and look more at it, it does look like that one of the, the things that, you know, when they put a plate back on, one of the plates, mm-hmm. say, for the for the, the, uh, the whole armoring, um, the plate hasn't sat right. And as you sort of move it yourself slightly, um, it does look like a small, probably the size of a briefcase hyperspace beacon. Has been attached. Cheeky. Mm-hmm. Can I turn it off? You make another starship engineering roll. Oh, dice. Uh, 17. Can't see here how they've you know there's no basically there's no obvious on off switch it looks like it's been when it's been attached and it's actually been wired into the ship as well that's why they seem to take a little bit longer than you Mm -hmm. would think normally for for the repairs Mm -hmm. um they've wired it into the to almost into the hype into the sublight engines uh area okie dokie so it's gaining so it's being powered via the the ship itself Hmm. i'll head in mm-hmm. up the ramp close the door mm-hmm. and growl at my companions 
I know it. Yeah, I, know I it. agree yeah. completely. Yeah, I couldn't believe it. That do you know what? Time to go. Should know that. Should know that. Yep. Yeah, so we're they know where we're going anyway. So let's mm-hmm. get wiggle on. Strap in. Let's get on the road. Yep. Uh, make an easy uh, astrogation. Make an easy pilot and roll to to sort of break dock and head out, and the same for your uh, navigator and easy and the uh, straight 15 astrogation roll, Jerry. To plot course to... <laughs> <laughs> you haven't, have you? No, I have. Oh, dear. <laughs> what did you roll? Oh, I smashed the 15. Smashed its back doors in. <laughs> got a one on the destiny dice. Oh, no. yeah. <laughs> I got 19 on mine. Okay, right. Well, okay, so that's a one on the right. Okay, that's fine. So that's fine. You plot the course. You've you've been there. You know, it's it's one of the many systems that you sort of do the standard run yeah. between you know between systems to gain some credits to to do that. You know, the old the the typical sort of elite. I'm going to go here to get some to buy some good some luxury goods and then come back here to buy minerals. You know, that type of thing. You know, the, the sort of the typical runs that you do. Um, and you day sort cash of runs. head out, yeah, the, the cash run, a milk run, almost. You know, and you you sort of hyperspace out and head head out towards uh, the thing. You you tap in your coordinates mm. and and sort of jump off into hyperspace. Um, a few hours later, um, you get you don't get the warning that you're coming out of hyperspace. It's almost as you are pulled out of hyperspace as somebody accidentally on the one jumped you very close to the one of the system moons within within Mongaz and the gravity well from the moon has just basically plucked the ship and it's you're basically almost like hitting turbulence but uh. think, tur- think turbulence on the factor of 10 as the ship is just basically <laughs> <laughs> I did tell you to hold on tight <laughs> uh, what That's I'll need from you problem. there free is I'll need you make you to make a pilot and roll yeah I need from both the Wookiee and your gunner, I want you to make strength rolls to stay in your seats. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you are bounced out of your seats. And then I want you to make a strength roll as well. I've got 17 on my pilot. Okay. Um, what? Oh, yeah. Well, um, the Wookiee's got five dice strength. I know that much. I, I got 11 uh, on my strength. But oh, one. you didn't, Jerry, did you? <laughs> but, I, but I got a one on my colored dice. Yeah, yeah. I see. Oh dear. I got a In our defense, on neither of these, neither of these chairs are particularly secure. Yeah. Not, <laughs> it's not so much neither of them secure. It's more the fact is you are bounced. Both of you are bounced physically out of your your, chair, your chairs. Um, the Wookie bounced. The Wookie's basically bounced and bounces up and smacks his head on the on the on the cockpit dome. Yeah. Um. Warren, you are bounced so far that your head basically bangs into one of the consoles at the front. Um, you both are going to take some damage for this. So the way it works with damage is you roll to soak the damage, you roll a strength. Mm-hmm. You roll your strength. I roll the damage. And because you both got a one, I'm making the damage slightly more than what it should be. Mm-hmm. Because I think that's only fair because you know, you're probably almost <laughs> most concussed yourself. Yep. One fifteen. <laughs> I've got a roll up on the destiny dice. Uh, yeah, so have I. Um, sure. Yeah, I'll show you the dice in a moment. One sec, so that. <laughs> so you look e- eighteen all in. Where's it? Where's it gone? Where's it gone? There it is. You see there? I got a six on my destiny dice for damage. <laughs> Shocking. <laughs> and what is it? I have to roll strength. strength. Roll your strength. Roll my strength. Yeah. 3D. Um, do not count the armor because this okay. isn't isn't you know. Isn't combat or anything? I'm just I'm uh-huh. not I'm not seeing count the armor first. Well, 13, 14, 15. Okay, I rolled that right. So you are both stunned. Oh, because okay. the way damage works is I roll the damage, you roll your soak, and it's the difference between what you roll and what I roll, and then that that falls within different brackets. So a naught to three or naught to whatever it is, stunned and then wounded and so on and so forth. That's how that's how physical damage works. Okay, yeah. stuns not too bad. No. If it had been wounded, then you're getting into reducing of dice and things like that. Okay. Okay. So you're both sort of stunned a bit as 
the ship is basically bounced and ricketed by the the gravity well almost created from the small moon and and you are managed to I'm having a great time, mate. Yeah, you're having you're having fun. These yeah. two, these two are just don't just uh, just haven't got the sea legs at all. No, or the space legs. So yes, you are basically both ricketed and bounced out of your chairs almost as the 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 ship skims almost skims across the surface of the moon or across the the the, the gravity arc of the moon as you are then you know heading out uh, towards the rest of. The, the system, you know, it's it's because you've been pulled out of hyperspace, it's just going to take you a little bit longer to get there. Mm. Um, you don't need to jump anymore. And I've just gone all blurred. Um, <laughs> see, that's what happens. You see, bounce yourself and the camera goes bird. You see, that's what it is. You um, I just assumed it was concussion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and as you, and then you head towards uh, the planet of Mongaza. So you, you are heading in and you get that sort of traditional, this is minus, um, minus port, sorry, minus tones, um, traffic control. Please identify yourself. Now, what I'm going to see here is you can have up to three different ship identities, if you wish. Okay. So come up with different names for three sort of different ships, you know, different ship identities, and that can be the IFF. So it doesn't have to always be the, the lazy gun. Lazy gun again. Yeah. Um, I have no problem with saying Lazy Gungan. Okay. Lazy Gungan, what's your business here in Mongaza? Seeing the sights, really. It's been a while. I know this quite well. I've got a lot of nostalgic memories of this place, and I wanted nothing more but to take two of my greatest friends on a trip with me. Make a persuasion, well. <laughs> Seeing the sights isn't something really with a with a with a with a planet like. A, <laughs> it's worth a go. So I'm very persuasive. Twenty um, six. <laughs> Not that fine. Yes, leaves gone. Now that's fine. You can hear the resignation in his voice like oh god another mm. sightseer in other words another smuggler he had to make mm -hmm. some money you know it's, it's, it's that sort of that old, that, die. That, old, that, <laughs> that old that old chestnut you know that old yeah. that old thing so yes uh bay 14 is free the the port master i'll be there to collect the docking face have a nice day. Click. Have a lovely time. He was a lovely gentleman. <laughs> what I'm uh -huh. going to do before we get off the ship is get some first aid done to these two because um, they've had a bit of a battery. Let's Let's do see. it while Let's laughing. Mm -hmm. While laughing at the mayor. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's it's not. I repeat, will not allow you to bandage my head. <laughs> Fine. No. no to the cone then, no. No, no. <laughs> no to the cone. <laughs> yeah, it, just, it just means you can't get the paw behind the Yeah, that's what it is, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, just make sure he doesn't jump out of any windows, Efri. <laughs> uh, I got a seven. No, it's fine. It, it is just that both of them just sort of more more shaken, more and stirred than stirred, shall we say? You know, I mean, you know, bounce bounce out of their chairs as they as they come in, oh. and you're able to easily land down in minus port. <clears throat> no, there's, there's, How there's, far from the port to the crash site? It's about via via hover vehicle or via sort of road vehicle, you know. For one of the repulsive vehicle, it's I, I in, assume we don't have it either, so we're gonna have to either you don't, you probably have to or, get one. Yeah, yeah the, it's, it's it, not it, walking it, distance, though. No, it's not walking distance, no. it's, about, it's about an hour and a half. Uh, on, on that type of vehicle, if you want the chance to take the ship, you know, really chance doing it, you're, to, you're probably talking about 30 minutes, you know, as, right. as, the, as the ship flies, shall we say, over, say, a, 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 a repulsive lift transport or whatever. A ground vehicle, anyway. Mm, don't want to draw any attention to ourselves as such. Um, looks like we are not walking. <laughs> I'd, say, I'd say we're going to... I'm more than happy to do a bit of uh, daylight robbery uh, and see what we can get for... Mm -hmm. yeah. No worries. So you, you, you land the ship, anyway. So, you know, it's not... It's not um, it's not, you know, the 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 
um, it's not a difficult thing to do, you know. So you so you land the ship quite easily, yeah. Um, and then you sort of as you disembark, you can see waiting there a human male um, with two two gentlemen dressed in identical sort of looking uniforms. Um, you denote that these are probably rangers. Um, and you sort of you sort of looking at it like a, a data pad, so almost like a clipboard going. Right, so, so this is, and, and he's sort of looking over, and you know, and as you're walking up, he sort of looks around you and sort of looking up and down the ship, you know, from where he is, and he's sort of going, oh, that's, 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 that's for peace, that's, 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 that's. and he sort of leans forward, so it's almost like he's squinting, you know, it's, it's you know, it's like his eyes are things goes, Lazy Minoc, it is, isn't it? Yes, yes, am I correct? Yes, yeah, yeah, that's the one, Lazy Minoc. That's that's definitely the ship. How long? How long are you staying for? No longer than 36 hours. So a day and a half. Refueling. I'm assuming you'll want refueled as well. Uh, Wouldn't hurt. Mechanics? Uh, repairs? None. Uh, no. No. Nah. So we have quite the uh, a refueling, mechanic on board. And, uh, and, uh, and just docking peas. Landing tax. That'll be 500 credits. I will get back. Does it have to be right now? That'll be 500 credits. Hand goes out. That'll be 500 credits. And he repeats himself again. Um, why? So, for example, why, why do we need... Is this for everybody? That is, is this just the lazy... That will be five hundred credits. Hand goes out again, and you can see the two the two guards are now positioning themselves. The two sort of rangers. Ah, uh, just give them the credits. That's fine. Not worth the hassle. Thank you. Remember, you are you are here. This is your, and he sort of hands you like a data chit almost of of the you know the almost like a little receipt, but it's also got you know. A time that's suddenly starting to tick down. You can see sort of this digital display sort of ticking down, and mm. this is the your docking chit, and he hands it over to you. As you can see, your time has started now. You are here for thirty six hours. Should you go over that time, there will be a fine. You are fined every hour beyond that thirty six hours, and the fine is a thousand credits. It's all in here, and he hands you over another sort of sheet, almost like a, a flimsy. That's that seemed to come that sort of come off the top. These are the terms of your docking. It's very bureaucratic. It's very weird. You know, it's, it is very much of money. This is it. He has the bureaucracy. This is the this is the this is the fine print. Should you violate it, we will basically take your take your soul almost. You know, it's it's that it's that sort of bureaucracy and in, in things. And he turns on his heels and and heads out with these two rangers following him. Interesting fella. Let's make a move, shall we? <clears throat> right, so you are in, the, basically you're in a, a, what would be classed as a mining town. It's almost like a frontier town. So uh -huh. It's a little bit like Freeport that you saw in Book of Boba Fett or Mos Eisley or Mos Espa. It's that sort of, sort of type of thing. Not necessarily the Adobe buildings, but you know, that sort of environment and that sort of, you know, uh, living on the fringe. Almost, mm. you know, it's not it's not like Kurosant or Naboo or one of those, you know, which are you know, all, all pristine and nice and things like that. You know, this is very much a frontier town. Um, so yeah, I was sort of in the main, main furrow there from where the docking stations are. There's, as you sort of look to the left and right, you can see there's probably about half a dozen docking stations sort of within this area. It seems to be the, the port is quite busy because of the, the type of end port export that they that they have within within the system and things like that. Mm -hmm. So what are you doing, folks? Presumably on board the ship, mm -hmm. we have, or I have, um, <clears throat> tools that I yes. use for repairs. I'm yes. going to bring those with me as well as my bowcaster. Okay. Um, yeah, you do. You, you have, the, you know, you have a, a almost like a, a Starship repair kit. You also have an astromech that can come with you, should you need yeah, let's bring the astromech because that'll help us do uh, additional diagnosis on the on the other ship if we find it. What we really need to do is to find some form of transport now to yeah. take yeah. us to the coordinates that we have. 
Okay. No, that's fine. I mean, you can you as you move further into town, you know, you you sort of as you head from where you are, because if you think of this way, the space ports are probably on the outskirts mm -hmm. because that's you mm -hmm. know where the easier for all the traffic to to come in and land than being in the centre of of the of the of the settlement. As you're sort of moving further in, you know, you you see you know things like the the commerce section and things like that, marketplaces and things like that. And as you head off to the sort of the opposite edge of the town from where you are, that's where you think. You know things like vehicles that will take you out into the into the wilds and stuff like that will be located. It's sort of on one side you've got the spaceport, on the other side you've got you know leading into the into the sit into this into the planet itself. You know the transports for that. Yeah. Whether it be repulsor mm -hmm. lifts or you know ground wheel to ground vehicles. You know it's really up to you which what type of vehicle you you're really looking for. We need to get back as fast as we can. Um, so realistically, we're looking for something quite mobile. Uh, you're, you're probably looking for a repulsor lift type of vehicle. So something similar to almost like a light speed, a light, yeah, a land speeder, sorry. Nelly said yeah. light speeder there. <laughs> <laughs> Conflating light, light saber and land speeder together. It's like, oh. <laughs> hybrid. Um, yeah, it's a hybrid. Yeah, a hybrid <laughs> weapon, that's what it is. Um, so yeah, you, you, you're probably looking at something similar to, you know, a land speeder or that type of vehicle. Mm -hmm. For speed more than, say, a wheeled one. Yeah, if we could get something like a like a V thirty five courier land speeder, you know they're they're, they're pretty nippy. Um, so um, and it's got three raised repulsor lift thrusters. It really so. depends upon what's available within the yeah. you know within. Well, the any land speeder will do, but we yeah. just we, we want to get a land we speeder. Some, that's something that will fit us all with the Wookie and yeah. the Mech. Yeah. 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 The, the the droid, by the way, is a T is T eight T E, is his name or Tate. Tate. T E T eight T T E. Tate. 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 But that, it's, it's right, okay. Yeah, that, that's the designation. It's it's it is a, a standard. Um, it the the droid the way I describe the droid because this is this is one that I've used previously is it, it's it's a. A version of BB-8, so it's a ball, not a mm -hmm. not an R2, um, because those droids would have been around. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of conflating the fact that th that type of style of droid would have been around anywhere. It's just you know, George George didn't think of it back 30 years ago. You know, so <laughs> <laughs> so yes, so so it's 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 a ball, but it is an astromech. T A T E. Okay. T A T E. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, so, so he does wheel by himself. He is an astromech. He, he's actually linked to the ship predominantly because he has a hyperdrive, uh, hyperdrive um, computer into it. Mm -hmm. So he acts as your additional hyperdrive, because the way the way ships work is you have a hyper navigator or a hyperdrive navigator. So that's an astro, you know, for calculating, and you have a backup, and he acts as the backup. Mm -hmm. So if the main one goes, he can still help you get, you know, the coordinates to jump out of hyper hyperspace and stuff. But he also has the the skills of being an astromech, so for repairs and things like that, he can do help you with minor repairs and things like that. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so yep, yeah, you you as you walk, you know, further towards where you think vehicles and stuff are, you start seeing, you know, the 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 buildings start to, th to thin out, you know, to where you are on the outskirts again, and you can mm -hmm. see a couple of sort of not dealers or rental places as you know as you're probably calling it. you can see a collection of different types of land speeder nothing that you know like a courier one that you would think you know something like that but there are util utility sort of land speeders so something a bit like what you see luke driving or what you saw at the beginning of the mandalorian you know when he was jumping in and said no droids and you know he had that that transport across the ice planet didn't mm. he, and stuff that headed him out to his ship so that, that type of thing so they're quite big they're able to take everybody and you do have those 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 sort of vehicles that you can drive yourself or you can have a pilot or you can have an astromech you know a, a droid pilot with that'll take you it's it's entirely up to you how you want to do it yeah <clears throat> so as you as you're coming in there so it's, so it's up to you to decide how you you know what type of uh, vehicle you're looking for just something we can drive ourselves. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Right. That's fine. Yep. Yeah. Um, easy enough. You know. You you see the, you know this. There's this um weak way, uh, sort of hum humanoid uh, sort of stand dealer there. You know, with this going. You want some buys? You interested in a in a vehicle? Um, 
the weak way or the, the uh, you saw a lot of them return in the Jedi. They're the ones that were the Jabba sail barge guards, the ones that, you know, mm-hmm. sort of like look a little bit of a prune face, but it's not. It's the it's the barman that you saw in Book of Baba when Cad Bane turned up the, to speak to the marshal. It's him. That's a weak way. Mm-hmm. Um, for race, racial sort of description of what they look like from from memory, um, and he's sort of gesturing. So, do you want to? There, we have good vehicles here. Are you interested? Yes. So, how long do you want the vehicle for? Thirty hours. <laughs> <laughs> we probably just it's, it's just a day trip. We're just sightseeing, it is, it is, man. It is, it is yeah. pretty much so. a day trip. So, day trip yeah, it's. 100 credits. No problem. But it needs to be big enough for me, the Twilik, the Wookiee, and a droid. No problem. Yeah. And he sort of points out, and it's 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 basically, it's, it's almost like a cargo um, land speeder in the fact that, you know, it's got the seats up front. There's a large space at the back where you can put crates and stuff in there mm-hmm. as well. You know, so so it's, it's quite elongated. So think a bit like Luke's just add another section to it almost. Grant, we've said the, yes, the, no yeah, problem. Yeah, yeah. Handed yeah. over the cash. Mm-hmm. He's handed us the keys. Yeah. We've chucked the keys to the Twilik. Yeah. <laughs> now, does anybody have ground vehicle piloting? Ground vehicle piloting. I'm guessing I... it would be the mechanical. I don't. Suspicion not. No. I have Walker operation though. We should have yeah, we should have asked for that. Shim, shim. <laughs> yes, I can really see the the fact of um of of your character piloting an assass there. Right? <laughs> mm, yeah. Draw attention to ourselves. Yeah. Um, mechanical, I'm two D two or two D plus two. Yeah. Um, just my general mechanical. It's, um, it would be just a general mechanical rule. Whoever wants to pilot. Who's got the best general mechanical? Any advance role? on three. Nope. I'm free. I'm free. D plus one. So happy so, anyway. So so it'll be our pilot then. Yeah. Yeah. Our pilot. Oh. yeah. Yeah. Um, what I'll do is I won't make it as difficult as it would be, you know, with you not having the skill because you are a pilot in sort of in sort of uh, essence. So you know, picking up and piloting a, a repulsive vehicle is probably not difficult for you. No, not my first rodeo, sir. So. No, definitely not. <laughs> All right, <coughs> ten. No, that's fine. It's not difficult to start a blast out and head towards the coordinates. You know, you, you, you're following mm-hmm. the, the coordinates that you've got. You've probably got a data data card or a data pad with the map on. So you've got mm-hmm. a map of the area and it shows you roughly where, you know, where where things, you know, where where the ship is and stuff like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this and I'm going to do <coughs> this. So after a bit of piloting, you get to see this. Oh. Come into this. Mm. Yes. So you basically are coming in, and I'm going to use paint, and I'll just draw it there. So you're coming into about there is where yeah. you you sort of mm-hmm. where you, where you're coming from. So you're coming from sort of this south area. You can see the the, the ship sort of crash there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you can see other bits of terrain, but yes, you know, as, as you you know from the map that you've got as well, it does show that it's it's a canyon area. So yeah. it has crashed next to the canyon area. So you can see the ship sort of crashed. And and not moving there, and the it, it, the way it's crashed as well, it's left a huge big gouge in the in the yeah. desert. Mm. So yeah. it's not just it's not just dropped out and just crashed straight down. It has come in at, at speed and at an angle, an and angle. it's just sort of caused this huge big graze within the mm-hmm. within Does the see anybody area. around it. Um, you can't from where you are. Doesn't necessarily mean that there's no one there, but from mm. where you are at the moment, you can't mm. see anybody. Shall we move quietly and stealthily yes. towards the ship, um, keeping our perception levels high to, to, uh, heightened okay. to try and uh, see if we see anything? Mm-hmm. I think I think it's better to do that than to, to go, Cooey! Anybody there? Hi. <laughs> uh, should we ditch the vehicle a little bit before so we don't make too much noise? Just leave the vehicle where it's at, yeah. We'll cover it yep. with a few bushes, maybe. Mm-hmm. Presumably. We were given all the information about the ship. Yes, you were. And the crew. Mm-hmm. Was there anything like uh, a signal um, to let them know that we're part of? There was. There was not. There was. Okay, n- just they, they, they never left you anything like 
uh, when you meet the crew, do X, Y, and Z, you know, or give them the strange mm. handshake and, you know, jump up and down and bounce on your head, you know, type of thing. There was none of that. It was just go get our ship. If the crew's there, fine, bring yep. them back with you. you know, it, in it which was, case, it so was what? written in such a way that the crew are expendable yeah. and <laughs> or they want the crew to come back because they want to find out what the hell happened. Mm-hmm. You know, it's written it's written in such ways that they really don't care about the crew, but if you can bring somebody yeah. back or bring the crew uh, back. In which in which case. <laughs> uh, 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 which in basic means. <laughs> uh, I think if we sneak up towards them and there's anybody alive, we'll get shot in the face because they'll think we're coming to rob them. Yeah. So just be direct and don't make it look like we're creeping up on them. This mm-hmm. is, after all, smugglers on a smuggling planet. Yeah, that is very fair. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Only on Wednesday. Um, so I'll make our way up to, uh, but quietly, but open. I'm not going to... Uh, not uh, hold my weapon close by because I don't want to. Are you, are you are you are you sneaking up? Or are you just walking up normally, but s- quietly? Not not, yeah. not 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 trampsing up there. Just walking yeah. slowly. Yeah. More than doing the whole stealth behind rock type of thing. Yeah. Yeah. No worries. Yeah. So so yeah, you you start to walk up. You know, so you start heading you know towards that way there. Mm-hmm. Just put it on the map there for you. Um, so. As you, you know, as you as you're sort of walking up, you know you can see the dis, this huge black scar of disbeard, dispersed scrub, and you know, and and you know all the other stuff that's that's come from the ship, basically skewering into the ground. Um, you can see, you know, the the canyon heading off to the sort of to the to the right as you mm-hmm. as you start walking up. Um, you know, there's there's you can smell um, burning. Or what was burning on the wind, you know, you can get that mm. sort of horrible mechanical smell with a bit of um, what you call it as well, you sort of that electrical ozone thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, as you get closer to the ship, you can see um, on the side of the ship pretty much that atypical sort of gunner nose art, you know, of the scantily clad alien mm-hmm. with the, um, the the spicy lazy lady sort of logo. Sort of, you know, the the wording in Arabish around, you know, sort of the edge type of thing. So it's almost like that gunner, that World War Two gunner art with you know, yeah. the Arabish around the edge of to denote that it is the ship as you're sort of heading towards it. And you can see there's a huge gash in the hull and stuff like that of either off what looks like predominantly off um off sort of the impact of the ship crashing. You can't see if the if the the ship crashing was anything. Shall we say, from a point of view of being shot, yeah, or an explosion, mm-hmm. you can't really tell from where you are. But you know, it doesn't necessarily mean that's not right. It's just, you know, that type of thing. We're lucky if there's any crew alive. Very lucky. Um, keep making my way forward uh, slowly, yeah. but I actually I'm going to do it a bit more urgently because uh, just in case there are Kirk crew alive. Mm-hmm. Uh, still going to be stealthy, but just walk a bit faster. Okay. Can I get uh, everybody that's there mm-hmm. uh, perception roll from me, please? First, if you're mm-hmm. wearing your helmet, Warren, you'll be at minus one. Uh, no helmet on at the moment, okay. so still strapped on my back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Twelve. Oh no, plus two. Seven. Thirteen. Okay. The astromech make a rule as well. Twelve. Um, the astromech can yes. Um, <gasps> its perception is two dice. Jerry, if you tackle the astromech, yeah, I'll give it a kick. Uh, Ten for the astromech. Okay. I mean, the astromech has the little, you know, as it's wheeling forward, it brings out the little, almost like the little radar dish, you know, the mm-hmm. doot, 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 that 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 they have as well. Um, so all all he is, but I think apart from the Wookiee, because he's deep with the outer mech, so so uh, uh, Ashen hands high. Um, you see, not just the ship, but you you see in the dirt next to it, um, what you think are tracks, mm. um, footprints at least that you can see heading you know that they're in amongst the dirt so it's really difficult to see which way they're going but they're definitely moved away from the ship but you can't see from there exactly without doing further sort of deep sort of look 
of where the where the where they've gone. Um, as much as I care about the crow, I'm going to keep looking at the ship because the ship mm-hmm. is what we came here for. Um, if you go and look at the ship, I'll go and scout the the um, footprints. How far away is the Wookiee? Oh, you I'm always door? just behind you. Good for good to know. That's fine. Yeah. As long as I'm not on my own going into a ship. No, no. If you take the work, <laughs> take the workie. Um, yeah. Uh, maybe m- maybe you take the Mac, and yeah. I will go and just uh, very very discreetly, mm-hmm. as discreetly as I can manage. But anyway, mm-hmm. um, uh, check and see where the footprints are are headed. Okay. Right. For you, Warren, have you got search? What is that this, under? It's skill under perception. No. Um, well, it is there. I, right. uh, but That's it's just, fine. Just, yes. It's there. It means you don't have a difficulty, a higher difficulty number. Oh, okay. If, it's more the fact is, is the skill on the list? Don't worry about yes. the dice next to it first. If the skill's okay. on the list, the then. Skill's on the list, yeah. Excellent. So you, you're able to search and do it relatively Okay, shall we say, because mm-hmm. um, there's no dice in it. If you didn't have the skill, it would just be a straight perception rule. But of course, the difficulty numbers, I increase the difficulty numbers. Yes. Okay. So what I want from you then is I want you to make a search roll. Mm-hmm. Uh, for the other two, Jerry, you can make a starship repair roll if you wish. Mm-hmm. Uh, free your character, if you wish, can either make starship repair, which I don't think you have, or a technical rule. I've got space transport repair. That's it, yes. That's Starship yeah. repair. Yeah. yeah, so make that Brilliant. as well. Okay. So what did you get, Warren? You're not going to believe this. What did you roll? 12, uh-huh. 18, yep. 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. 26. Yay. 26. Yay. That's a good rule. And I'll wait for the other two to do this, and then we'll do it. All I had again. three exploding sixes. Oh, you got some exploding sixes. It's good when that happens, isn't it? <laughs> yes, that, that, that makes my, <laughs> makes my night. Um, what did you get, Jerry? 18. X, right? And 11. 11, okay. Mm-hmm. Well, between the two years, you know, you can see as, you, as you're sort of looking in the ship and, and you can head into the ship. Mm. Yeah. Um, where from where you are, you know, you can start heading in, and you can see the you know the cargo bay is where the basically the hole is and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, knowing knowing straight away that you can go and head straight towards the flight recorder. There is a flight recorder on all the ships, you know, so you know, Jerry, where to go straight away on this type of model. So you, okay. that's where you're going to be heading straight yeah. to. Um, as you look uh, in the um. Sort of in the cargo hold, you can see some huge, great big cargo crates, and you can see one of them's cracked open slightly, and there is basically some spice coming out of it. So they were definitely smuggling or, or taking some spice, maybe legal, illegally off planet, or instead of going through no normal channels. You're not sure, but that's what you can see. You know, you've got this great big rip in the side of the ship anyway. Mm-hmm. Warren, for you, as you scan around, you can see the little footprints. Is the map still there, by the way, folks? No. Oh, you need to throw it up again. It needs to be thrown up again. No worries for it. I won't do the share. There we go. You can see the footprints are heading basically towards this cave. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Here. Um, the, from what you can see from the footprints, I'll just stop sharing. There. From what you can see with the footprints, it's at least a single pair of mm-hmm. footprints. Not sure if uh, you can see there's any more than that, but there's definitely a single pair of footprints heading towards the cave. Yes, I'm going to make my way back to the ship. Okay, because I think uh, going into a cave on my own makes absolutely no sense. So, okay, I'm going to go back to the ship and I'm going to tell <laughs> the crew the those footprints head into a cave behind us. As you're sort of scrabbling around and looking around the ship as well, those that are in the ship, um, you see there are some signs of blood, but there's no, oh. as you sort of go through the sort of the different decks, because it's almost like on two decks, this, this is a quite a big medium freighter. Um, there are no signs of any of the crew. There are signs of blood. There's signs of things got on. There's nothing, you know, nothing. So else. no dead bodies or anything. No lying dead bodies or anything like that. Is there signs of any of the cargo? Uh, yeah, there there are crates there. The crates are still in, <clears> in, the, <throat> in the in the in the in there. 
Well, you remember, we were asked to retrieve the cargo, the ship, and the crew. Yeah. Well, the, if the crew was alive, and we don't know that. Well, can I open any of the crates? Well, one of the crates is cracked open and it's leaking spice. Oh, so it is spice, so it hasn't yeah, been replaced it is with leaking, just yeah, empty yeah. rocks because I don't want to go back to the Crimson Dawn no. and hand over a bunch of rocks. How about me and the droid head and conduct a scan of the cave? Mm-hmm. Is the droid capable of doing a kind of like a scan of some sort? To- yeah. Yeah, can, uh, can scan it can for it life can, signs. Yeah, it can do that. Yeah, it's, 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 it's how close to the cave does it need to be? You know, uh, kind of... It wouldn't need to be that close. Probably about halfway. Right. Uh, so probably to get, to get to get a deeper scan or to get a scan, you know, where because remember, it's a cave, so the rocks may be blocked. May be blocked uh, that you'd probably think you need to be quite closer to the entrance. But not traditionally, you know, it doesn't need to be that close away. But because it is a cave and because of the yeah. system. You know, it can cause well, look, that. I'll t- look, if um, Twilight and Wookiee can get this I'll, ship. I'll see whether or not this can be salvageable or yeah. flyable. See if we can yeah. fly this bad boy mm-hmm. out of here. Um, and I'll take the droid and we'll go and conduct a scan <laughs> um, of the cave and see um, what, what might be in there, if there's any life signs. I am going to have a look around the ship, see if there's anything else um, at all, uh, just in general. Okay. Um, make a really nice. space transports repair for you checking things there, Free. Uh, Jerry, you make a one for what you were going to do with, with, you know, checking to see, you know, the issues re- around the ship, you know, what, what's there, what's not. Yeah. Warren, as you sort of cre- get up there, I need you to, you can make a perception roll yourself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The droid can make a perception roll and it's just two dice. Okay. Okay. But it won't be as difficult for the droid as it would be, say, for you because of the yeah, you know, the sensors and stuff like that. Um, it's got a fifteen. I want to have yeah. a look to everything's in order in terms of piloting. Um, see that everything going from the bridge outwards yeah. and check that it wasn't meddled with in any particular way. Yeah, no worries. Uh, okay, what did you get, get Ron? Yeah, I got uh, so on my perception rule, I got nine. Okay. And then on the droid's perception roll, mm-hmm. he got 6, 12, mm-hmm. 20. Did you get an exploding oh, dice, did you? What? Yeah, he, he exploded. He exploded. Yeah. Yeah. Um, You're getting good at that, aren't you? I know. <laughs> um, uh, right, so I'm actually... And, uh, and I was going to say, me being in the northeast of England, I can't check to see if the dice, dice is weird no, no. or not. You see, you know what I mean? <laughs> no, it bakes them all for him. I was yeah, going to well, say, just like bake them all for him with magnets. <laughs> uh, actually, my perception is plus one as well. So yeah. I got... 10, 10 that's fine yeah. and, and the, the droid got a 20 yeah. and the yeah. droid got a 20 yeah no worries right so we'll start off with the ship okay so a survey of the ship the ship is pilotable okay Bare, right the issues around the ship are that it, it is near functional however it's not space worthy as in to go to atmos- go to outer atmosphere okay because of the air the hole inside of the hull and stuff like that yeah um the engines are a little bit probably questionable um the landing gear has been completely shared so when it's crashed the landing gear has just completely been shared off the off the ship itself so that's part of the debris that you saw sort of lying around and things like that yeah um like i said the whole integrity is very questionable it may fly to you know back to the back to the say the city or next to the city but it probably won't go you know to outer atmosphere with major refit or major re, mm-hmm. major hole. Okay. Um, as you check, as whoever else is checking the ship as well, you do notice around the bulkhead and the landing ramp, you know, the thing that would, would come down, you can see scoring marks and it's not, it's not heavy blaster. It's blaster fire as in hand or rifle fire around the, around that area. Not, not sort of say big gun blaster, so ship, ship mounted weaponry. There's no scoring anywhere on the hull that you can see, mm. but you can see there was some sort of altercation around the ship. That doesn't necessarily mean it was recent, you know, because, mm-hmm. you know, your ship gets blaster marks, you know, you've all, you've all ran from the authorities, shall we say, and, and, you know, they've shot at the ship and stuff like that. But there is that marking around sort of the hull and stuff like that. As you, head up and the droid scans the, the cave, you are picking up, you're definitely picking up life signs. 
you can you're definitely picking up what what you believe is at least one humanoid. So that could be, you know, anything from human right the way through to Wookiee, yeah? From from the scan of the 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 the, the ship or the from the cave. But mm-hmm. you're also picking up what you would class as beasts or animal life signs as well within the cave. Okay, so run that past me once more. So So you're picking up at least one humanoid. One humanoid? And at least some or a collection of beasts, animals. Definitely in the cave. Definitely in the cave system, yes. Okay. Right. Can I get, while you're busy thinking there, Warren, uh, all of those next to the ship or around the ship, Mm. can I get a perception roll from both of you, please? You can. It. Yes. Where you are, Free, where Ash is, Mm -hmm. you start hearing that you know that noise that you got with the bee 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 bee. The you know the 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 um the proximity alert. Yeah. That you get on your ship, you're getting that. You can hear it from where you are, from the you know from where the bridge is, from where you are, sort of echoing through the ship. Mm. Uh, go and look in the bridge. See what's going on. Okay. So you head up to the bridge. Um, you are basically, basically the ship is denoting there's a proximity alarm, which denotes incoming ships or in, something against incoming. We'll try and get the shell on the road, but we can't leave the Merc behind. Um, uh, I'm yeah, going right. to go. I've got to be generous since you answer. You've all got comlinks while you did this. You would have done this anyway. So you've all have a comlink. Okay. Okay. Be able to keep communication. It's just easier that way than a little yeah. bit of red, a little bit of retcon for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm just gonna uh, run through to the other guys. So it looks like we've got company real soon. So better get back to the ship. Uh, see if we can get this off the ground. Okay. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna say look we've 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 found something in the in the cave. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I'll be right back. I'm just going on my tauntaun here to just take a quick look. To, to see what's happening. Okay. okay. If we have to get out of here, you still got the vehicle at the back. Make sure you take it back to rental. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Don't worry yep. about the extra now. And what is our Wookiee doing? Oh, well, I'll be assessing the captain and attempting to get the okay. engine started on the uh, mm-hmm. spicy lady. So, How you- are the weapons looking on this ship? <laughs> what weapons? It looks yeah, like, it it looks like it, look, it looks pretty much <laughs> like it's, it's, you know, there there is a... A, a toss, what's called a, a, a basically a, a ventral and dorsal turret, so the top and bottom. You're not yeah. sure about the one that's buried in the sand underneath. You think there might be, you might be able to get once the ship's got power. There was a little bit of power, that's why you were able to get the, you know, the proximity alarm mm-hmm. was going off. There was a, still a, some residue power in there, so you think if maybe if you can get some proper power to the engines and, and start trying to lift off, the dorsal turret might work. You're not sure about the bottom one or the ventral, you know, ventral, whichever but, way it is, you know. Maybe. <laughs> You're not sure how it's going to work, you know. Okay. Um, I want from you two then, as you're trying to get the ship or some power to the ship, you can do this as a joint action or mm-hmm. what I can say is because you're working together, you can reduce the difficulty level if one of you wants to row ship repair. It's entirely up to you which way you want to do it. So whoever's got the best ship repair might want to have the other one help, and that reduces the difficulty number. My ship so, repair is five dice is, plus one. Oh, yours is better than mine. Right. Uh, and so, I've got to burn a character point as well to push that okay. up to six. Yes. Yep. Yeah. You can <laughs> a point for uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, 26. Oh, Yes. You're clicking switches, you're doing this, you're you're grabbing a cable from one thing and sticking it somewhere else. The droid, droid, I would say the droid's helping, but the droid is with, of course, your Merc friend. And as you you can hear, as you do that last sort of click, the the engines or the end, the the sort of almost like the sublight engine, 
but it's, you know it's the engine that you'd use just to travel within within planet kicking a life and, and you get that of <laughs> 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 um, just from the bike there's power to everything but the uh command console is now live as well so yeah yeah so the command <laughs> console's live so you've got you know you've got your thing up and you're sitting there um and this is why as, my show's in my bridge. That it bridge. indeed is indeed. As <laughs> you're about to enter the cave there, Mr. Merck, you sort of look over your shoulder mm-hmm. and breaking, virtually flying straight over the top of you. It's almost like a like a bombing run almost. You see half a dozen Z95 headhunters just break straight over the top of you. Boom, and then break and sort of head, head sort of peeling around. As you then look, you can see a bunch of those old Republic uh, landing craft, you know, the, the lat, the, the gunships that you saw on attack of the clones. Yeah. You see six of them sort of drop straight down oh. heading, you know, heading towards uh, basically the crash site. And what I'm going to do then is we're going to end it there. <gasps> nice little cliffhanger for you. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> What a way to spend me the fall. I was crying. We, we have to finish this. Okay. Um, uh, there will be another. Oh, there will be the bar too. Yes, definitely. But I thought that was a good place to stop oh, for you folks. That's great. That was Thank, great. Thanks for your time there, Ralph. Oh, no um, worries. And uh, stay tuned, folks, to see what happens when the intrepid crew of the Lazy Gungan feel their way forward. <laughs> full scale assault. Me, I think we're gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> white flag, white flag. Um, <laughs> the worst part is when you're working, you shit yourself. You just mat your fear. So, <laughs> oh. And on that yeah. delightful note, folks. Oh. Take care, and let us know you think below. Mate, I'll be with you. Yeah, exactly. with you. We hope you enjoyed this Let's Play. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on. <laughs>